Could plastic waste have met its microscopic match? Scientists in Britain and the U.S. say they've engineered a plastic-eating enzyme, which they discovered by accident. The enzyme can digest a form of plastic called PET, which is now used in millions of tons of plastic bottles. That kind of plastic can last for hundreds of years in the environment and pollutes land and water around the world. So, could this new enzyme revolutionize the recycling process? For more on that, we turn to Associate Professor Lee Woodcock. He's with the Chemistry Department at the University of uh, South Florida, and he's one of the members of the international team that's develop, developing this plastic-eating enzyme. So uh, uh, Lee, uh, Lee joins me from Tampa, Florida. So uh, Lee, can you help us understand how this plastic-eating enzyme works? Okay, Andrew, it's great to be with you. And uh, yes, absolutely. So um, about a, a little over a year ago, um, uh, Japanese researchers found um, a bacteria that kind of naturally uh, grew this ability to degrade plastics. Um, not surprisingly, they, they found it in, in a plastic recycling you know, uh, plant, so uh, where tons of plastics go through. So it kind of naturally evolved this ability. Um, and it's not that surprising, it's related to other enzymes that, that um, do related things in plants. Um, and so what happened over time is we were able to finally, working with folks at NREL in Fort Smith in the UK, um, isolate this and find crystal structure. So we're able to really look down at the 3D structure of it um, and start to understand how it worked uh, to, to ultimately hope to elucidate the, the, the chemistry that's going on. Um, and as part of that process, um, we were able to look to see how things bind to it um, and how it reacts and, it, and really kind of understand how the unique properties of PET and the plastics that we use today um, you know, are, are, mm -hmm. are taken advantage of uh, to stabilize this enzyme. So once they break down the plastic bottles, what do these enzymes produce? So they produce, um, so ultimately in the bacteria there, is, it's a coupled enzyme system. So there are two enzymes that work in conjunction to essentially break it down to their starting materials. So really we're talking about complete plastic recycling. Um, and this is a real problem because right now, you know, a lot of people may think that when you put your plastic bottle in the recycling bin that, you know, everything is okay, right? That, okay, this is gonna go back and it'll be used 100 times. But in reality, that's not the case. Plastics are really inefficiently recycled um, and usually a couple of times, within a couple of times, uh, they're dead-ended, right? So they go into carpets or into, or into clothing um, and these don't get recycled. So these allow- Yeah, go ahead. Sorry. No, so, so this is allows complete recycling um, of the PET. So how significant do you think this finding is? And do you think that one day you'll be able to industrially introduce this plastic eating enzyme that will significantly re reduce the amount of plastic waste that we see? So it's definitely a very significant find um, is the good news. Uh, the bad news is that we're in, well, not the bad news, but the, uh, but the mixed news is we're in the early stages. And we're already, one of the great things we showed in this paper is that uh, we were able to make some, uh, some very small changes and improve the efficiency of the enzyme. And I think that, and my collaborators would agree, that with, uh, with concerted additional effort in further engineering of this enzyme, we, could, we should be able to easily improve the activity of this many folds. Um, and ultimately, yes, ultimately I think that this could get introduced into an industrial recycling um, facility to where you're taking something that used to go into landfills and is now being recycled as industrially relevant uh, starting products. Wow, is there, any, is, is there any downside to this plastic eating enzyme? Any concerns that you have about it? So the, the one concern would be is that uh, it's already out there, right? So we didn't, like this wasn't created in a lab. I mean, this, this, this grew naturally. And uh, anytime you take something that is, that is evolved to do something that is not and you know that's not nature is not min, uh, intending it to do. You never really understand the consequences it's going to have mm. on either a micro or a macro ecosystem uh, in the ocean. And unfortunately, that's not. There's nothing we can do about that. That's already happened. The cat's out of the bag on that. Um, the good news is that there are there are international organizations working to try to mitigate this by collecting as much plastic out of the ocean as possible. Mm -hmm. And then once that happens, hopefully they'll bring it to a facility mm -hmm. one day, and um, and we'll be able to dump a bunch of enzyme on it and within a few days be back to starting materials and, and making brand new plastics that, uh, that, that can be used in new, wow. in new packaging. Within a few days, that's amazing. Uh, just very quickly, we only have a few seconds left, but you know, some people, when we, when we thought about the story today, we think about that Texas-sized plastic blob in the middle of the ocean. So 
would this plastic eating enzyme be able to deal with that situation potentially? Well, I think I think we're a long ways away from introducing an outside organism into the ocean to, to tackle that. I think the the better strategy there, uh, at least for the foreseeable future, unless unless new scientific breakthroughs are made, um, would be to try to try our best to collect that and isolate it from from the ocean before treating it with mm. um, with before treating it with bacteria that, that could potentially degrade. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, uh, Lee. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. That was Associate Professor Lee Woodcock joining us from Tampa, Florida.